So now the other thing we don't have a lot of control over is the round trip time to the server. To get a sense of what kind of round trip time we're looking at, we can go to one of several sites to ping our site from multiple locations around the planet. Now a ping is just another word for a round trip. A message goes to the server and comes back, and the amount of time that the ping takes is the amount of time that a round trip would take. Now I like a site called Start Ping. As of this recording, it wasn't working quite right, so I found an alternative called Super Ping. But there are multiple sites like this where you can ping a domain from multiple locations. So what I'm going to do is put in buildamodule.com, just the base domain, that's all we need, and I'll click ping. It's going to take a minute or so in order to load up all of the different pings from the different locations around the world. So the way to read this is you can look at the location where the computer is that's performing the ping. So if this was our computer, it would say Boise, Idaho in the US, something similar to what you see down here. The average here is the average number of milliseconds it took to do a ping or a round trip. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so we can see more of the numbers. You can see that the average across the US and Canada was about 41 milliseconds. In DevTools, we were getting about 63 milliseconds for our initial connection, so that sounds about right. Now, if we compare this with various places in Asia, it's much different, so the average is about 212 milliseconds. What this means is that when we look at the batches here, remember Chrome will open up six connections, and then other files that the browser wants to download have to wait until those files are done. So if we look at our bars here, and we think about what this round trip time will do, if we click on the top one, where we have an initial connection and a waiting here, we'd now be looking at at least 200 milliseconds for this orange bar and also for this green bar. So that's about going to triple the amount of time it takes to download this, even if that individual has a really good internet connection. This will also be compounded with the more files that we have, because remember, we can only download six files at a time. So our downloads kind of happen in batches. So here's our first batch, roughly, and then here's our next batch. The delay for each batch will be extended by at least the round trip time. So the more files we have, the slower the site is going to load. If we try to calculate this out just roughly, the delay for each one of these files will be increased by about 300 milliseconds. The way I'm calculating that is seeing this at about 200 milliseconds for a trip from Asia compared to 75 seconds here. So let's say about 150 seconds added here and 150 seconds added here. So for this initial batch of six files, we're gonna have to add 300 milliseconds to the total time downloaded. And then for each initial batch, we'll have to add about 150 milliseconds because we don't have the initial connection anymore, but we still have one full trip to the server. So if we have two batches of downloads, that's going to be at least a delay of 450 milliseconds. So almost half a second. And that's not taking into account what's going on over here in this last batch that starts to download after our CSS has gotten processed. So again, as a front end developer, we don't have a lot of control over this particular aspect of performance, but it gives us more of a reason to focus on what we have to work with. You might find yourself wondering if it's really worth it to concatenize and minimize all of your JavaScript and CSS because you're comparing the performance gains on your own computer. So it's important to kind of reach out a little bit and see what the impact is going to be across your whole audience. You can find that the extra effort that you're taking will actually make the difference in how successful your site is in other parts of the world.